What's going on everybody? I hope you're having a good week. It's almost over and it's almost time for the weekend, which means it's time to go out and shoot. So I figured I'd do one more tutorial before the week is over on how to do super slow, super slow motion um, in Final Cut Pro and some of the tips that I have for you. There's a plugin called Twixter. If you guys know about Twixter, Twixter is amazing and that's going to be an amazing program for you guys to use. I have it, um, but today I'm going to show you guys how to do it all within Final Cut so that you don't need any extra expensive plugins at all. Um, so the clip we're working with is the shot that we took last weekend um, of a little bit of longboarding um, just outside the city of Edmonton where I live. And it works pretty well for super slow motion. The reason why is because it is high contrast. So as you can see, my white t-shirt and my arms and my shorts, um, nothing's gonna blend into the background quite so much. The background is quite busy um, which wasn't isn't ideal, um, but because there's such good contrast, and that's really going to help our slow motion when we use optical flow um, in Final Cut. Another tip that I have for you is to shoot in the highest frame rate as possible. I know this seems obvious um, to some of you guys, but to others, um, this is super important. If you really want slow motion and that slow cinematic look, then you really got to shoot in a high frame rate, so at least 60 frames per second. And if you're on a GoPro or a Sony that can do higher, or a GH4 or GH5 or something, then definitely shoot in those 120, 180, and then you can get perfect slow motion, and you might not even need to use optical flow at all. So for this shot, um, we're going to cut the slow motion as I sort of come and like hit the peak of the turn, just like so. Another tip that I have is instead of using a blade speed by hitting Shift B, and that would bring in a gradual slow motion. Um, what I would actually suggest if you're doing a large contrast is actually just to do a straight cut. This way the optical flow doesn't have to um, keep changing how many frames it's adding based on the speed because sometimes that gives a blurry result. So it'll actually be better, better if you just hit Command B and cut that and then on this clip what we can do is find where we want the slow motion to start. Remember, when you're hitting slow motion, your clip is going to be extended. So a clip that we have at, say, one second, if we go to 10%, now it's going to be 10 seconds. Um, so it just lengthens everything. Um, so it's something to keep in mind depending on how long your shot is going to be. Um, so for the shot, we're going to just do it super quick. It's going to be only like a couple frames. Um, probably just like that. I'm going to hit Shift or Command B again to cut it. Then we can open up our um, Retime Editor by hitting Command R, and then hit the arrow. And I'm going to say Custom. For this, we're going to do 10% slow motion. So as you can see, this clip gets extended by quite a bit. Um, so now we have a two-second clip to work with. So if I play this back, you're going to notice that there's going to be lots of choppiness into the frame and it's not going to be smooth. So that doesn't look good. What we want is that perfectly smooth shot. Um, but we can't get this because we didn't shoot in a high enough frame rate. So what we can do is we can add an optical flow um, built into Final Cut and that's going to allow us to create the frames and make it super slow motion. So if you go over to a retime tool, over to the left of the screen, scroll down to the video quality, Normal is no addedness or added frames to it. Um, frame blending is you don't want to use that. That tends to give a lot of ghosting. The one we want to use is optical flow. So now we can add on optical flow. And this is going to take a little while, um, depending on your shot um, and how fast your computer is, because it's going to analyze it and detect how much motion is needed and then how many frames to add and what frames those look like. So now if we play back our shot here, I can show you what it looks like. So now we get perfectly smooth slow motion all within Final Cut and it's super easy to do. And then it sort of cuts out. So depending on um, your shot, you will get better or worse results. If you guys are trying to do this at nighttime, um, that's when the results are probably the worst. 
is because there's so or so little contrast between you and the background that optical flow has a really hard time analyzing the shot and getting the frames. So you really just have to think about what shots would work best for this. Um, and hopefully I gave you guys some tips to help you with it. I'll probably do a full video on Twixter um, because that is a lot more detailed plugin to get super slow motion. Um, but I hope this gave a pretty brief um, but detailed overall on how to use optical flow within Final Cut. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Into the dark.